Hello, my fellow hunters. Uh, this is Hiroja Scheib from Satoshi's Treasure Hunters. And this is June 30th with your weekly hunt update. Uh, we're going to talk about the Nevada Key and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, game mechanics. Uh, this has been a very eventful week. We've had some new hunters come aboard. Talk a little bit about the during the Freedom Key Code Day. Uh, we've had some solves for some very old keys that have been, uh, you can say, on the books for a while that have been solved, and a few other things that have happened. Uh, most of them I will talk about later on in the week um, when I talk about those keys and the breakdowns of the, the adventures for them. But for this particular episode, I'm just going to focus on the Nirvana key and talking about some of the issues with the game mechanics. So let's just get on the trail, uh, get on the hunt, if you will, and let's talk about the Nirvana key. Okay, so let's go through the list of keys that have been found. Of course, you got the, the first three, which are the J key, the Bismuth key, and the Maru key. They have been found. Uh, the Pawn key, which is the Rabbit key. The Hunter key, which is one of three. We only found one of those keys that has been found. The Earth key is still unknown. It still has not been found, but there are some rumors that it has been found. But the site itself has not updated, and they've been, well, not as fast as people have wanted them to be, have been pretty clear about what keys have been found. The Abon key, the big soda can key that it took 50 Twitter handles to find the puzzle pieces and piece them together uh, to a beautiful, colorful can that's been basically whipping people's asses for like since its launch for the last, was it more than a month, like a month and a half, if you will, to solve it, has been found. It has not been publicly disclosed, but it has been found. Uh, the Aesop key has been found, uh, the clan key, uh, that was won by the Toshi uh, Cypher group, they have not publicly disclosed that. Uh, the room key has been found, uh, we'll talk about that in the game mechanics, uh, but you still can find the room key. Uh, the cult key, uh, there's a potential declaring of a winner, but it hasn't been stated as who is found. Uh, we'll talk about that in the game mechanics. Uh, the Global Key has been found, and the Nirvana Key, which is the key we're talking about, has been found, which is one of the geolocation keys. That was found by the Toshi Cipher Group, and they have publicly disclosed that key as of today. Uh, the Zero Knowledge Key, which is a month-long uh, event of yours, about July 31st, I believe, is a date for that one. Uh, you have to, or is it July 6th? So July the 31st, uh, you have until that time to be able to find the three keys or potentially anyone who's been able to solve the particular puzzles for that particular very heavy centric cryptographic uh, puzzle, if you will, you can obtain three keys from that and $70,000. The Flanket key uh, just kind of started as of July 1st, if you will, the, you know, you have to donate the most with Satoshi's treasure in your handle. We talked about that when that key was released. We won't know until July 31st, you know, who has those keys, which is up to a total of four keys. And the distances key has been found. So a lot of these keys are falling to the wayside. The earth key hasn't been quite solved yet, but remember it has. The cult key, I guess you can say the first of those keys have been released, possibly. We won't know until the site is updated. Uh, and then you have the zero knowledge key, the philanthropic key, which is ongoing. And then we have the freedom key, which as a recording of this episode, hasn't been declared found or no one has stated that they met with the person. Uh, it's 11 a.m. Um, Denmark time in Copenhagen is when that uh, person is going to be there. They're going to have either a flyer or some kind of... Uh, QR code for people to obtain and be able to scan and, and, and get that key. So, as you can see, a lot has been going on. There was some news about the Satoshi Treasure Hut, so it caused an influx of new hunters coming into the game. Be nice, be kind, try to get them to be part of your clan because as soon as those new hunters came along, 
their bone key was solved and there's been significant progress with the earth key with uh, the discussions through the official telegram as well as some of the, the public group chats have made some significant progress that you know they were stuck new fresh blood new fresh pair of eyes have caused some kind of you know progress for those games uh, I won't say games but those puzzles so that's been a, a good thing I did do a primer which I will uh, link again and I will do another one a more EL5 one about the Sergi treasure hunt and how the game works um, what public plans are out there uh, what to expect if you will just to kind of try to trim down the freedom key points into a, a simple 10 minute video that can be shared where you can send it to any new hunter and they can have a up to speed understanding of what this Sergi treasure hunt is all about and how to play the game if you will so that being said uh, the Nirvana key was in fact found uh, the Toshi clan uh, published on their blog site so you can go to their site you're able to get the key as well as uh, scan the QR code for yourself I appreciate that and uh, a couple of other keys they released they haven't had the, the QR code but I guess now with the hunters or whatever with the pictures they're, they're kind of being a little bit better about you know their blogs or whatever uh most of the time with these qr codes is because you're you're going to a site most of those puzzles are cryptographic puzzles you enter the passphrase and bam uh you have the qr code and the uh the key if you will the mathematical key they of course met at iris kitchen and tea room which was in india and it's uh, Rashika, India. Uh, there was someone who was able to go out there, uh, meet up with the person, scan the QR code, and obtain the key. Uh, I just have a link of, from TripAdvisor there. If you're ever in India, if you're ever in the area, maybe you want to pay, pay a homage to that particular place. I also emphasize this because uh, the geolocation keys are keys that, for the most part, you're not going to be able to f once they're found and they're not disclosed you're, you're not going to be able to find them so if you have the chance or the opportunity to send somebody from your clan or somebody you know through within your personal network to these geolocation keys I would do so so that way you can obtain the key because not all keys are going to be publicly disclosed I imagine as we get higher and higher like around the hundreds or maybe the mid hundreds I imagine more and more clans are going to be more Clearish. They're going to be more closed off, and you're not going to see these public disclosures, if you will, of, the, of those keys because you're starting to get towards the potential of the value of winning the prize, if you will. But for now, people are being friendly, people are disclosing keys, and it's very appreciative. It allows for clans to, you know, learn, to get better, uh, for newcomers to be able to figure out how they can they themselves can solve these keys to catch up and not feel like they're being left behind if you will that being said um, it's nice to see how welcoming people are for the new hunters kind of breaking down explaining to them about the game um, directing to the proper sites letting them know where all the keys are that have been publicly disclosed um, showing them where the unfound ones are and what they kind of are looking for and needing people and you know asking them to join their clans or uh, su suggesting that they can always form their own those type of deals is, is nice to see but there are some game mechanic issues with the game and it's been slow we've talked about this a few times there's been like this slow little little um, mistakes that kind of just pile up to make it a little bit frustrating uh, the biggest one dealing with the, the global key, uh, the choices, if you will, what the game makers have been doing with like three of these keys being kind of more of marketing keys. You have the, the clan key, which was a kind of public disclosure, if you will, of people having to show their faces and forming these blocks via Twitter in order to um, have the longest chain in order to obtain the key. Then you have the, the cult key, where it's kind of like this multi-level marketing type of deal where you're trying to recruit either your fellow clan members or new hunters into the game and having them uh, 
sign up under you, if you will, with their phone number. And granted, they can use a burner number or a, a VOP number or some throwaway number or even a landline, if you will. Why? I don't think they can get a text message for a landline. But <clears throat> so it's like disclosure of, of kind of personal information, if you will, with the, the clan key, the code key, and now with the, the philanthropy philanthropy key where you can donate anonymously and there is a way to do so like you can always give a fake name you can do it in bitcoin or fiat if you will and satoshi hunter you know hiroshi shibe or satoshi hunter blah 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 one and you, you know use your clan name so satoshi hunter uh satoshi's treasure if you will satoshi hunter blah blah one or something of that nature and for some people, it feels like it's a capture information. There was a bit of an issue with one of the keys early on around Easter, which was a Lapon key, where you had to purchase a digital egg and enter your credit card information. Uh, the Amazon gift card component wasn't working, so it didn't allow for a lot of global people to be able to participate. I think PayPal was an option, but people were, again, very deeply concerned about giving up their private information. And that's a very big issue globally, if you will. It's a hotbed issue here in the States, a lot of in Europe. But globally, you're seeing that. You're seeing that in the Hong Kong protests. You're seeing that in Sudan. Uh, you're seeing where public information or what people perceive to be private and should be considered private information being just scattered throughout the Internet. People getting scammed all the time. Um, phone calls. Uh, you, you try to do all the the appropriate things you should be doing with 2FA and you know alternate emails and it still doesn't work and you still have your accounts particularly your banking information hacked and your funds being stolen just all sorts of funkiness going on and bad actions and bad actors going on in the world and for particularly for this space this cryptocurrency space where it's very tech centric very first wave if you will as far as you know uh, they're always the first person you know it's called the first inventors or first waivers they're always there with uh, the new tech have to have the new thing creating inventing tinkering and doing things of that nature are a little bit more paranoid a little particularly in the cryptocurrency space a little bit more privacy centric they're not many of them are not fully willing to give up the complete you know their complete public information um, they're shown they're willing to do so, be a little bit more open, like myself, talking about, you know, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Uh, but they, you know, some are using pseudonyms, some are using fake names, they're using VPNs, they're doing everything they can to prevent themselves from being a point of attack. Because when it comes to Bitcoin, people have been, you know, personally robbed, they've been held at gunpoint, they've been kidnapped, uh, they've been simjacked. Uh, people have broken into their homes, they've had family members kidnapped or threatened to be kidnapped, they have been had family members try to scam them, steal from them, uh, computers taken, hard drives, thefts of that nature, all sorts of different craziness. Not to mention, you know, the exchanges that exit scam or the exchanges that get hacked and lose funds or in the case of Quadratic, where exchanges really weren't exchanges but buckets and they were just taking customer funds and gambling it away, all, all sorts of craziness, if you will. So there's a bit of a hesitancy, and you can see some of the people that are very enthusiastic about this game kind of dipping out because it just conflicts with their core philosophy. We saw the big, I would say rage quit, quit, but you know the big dip where uh, the Magellan Clan, their website is gone. Uh, they've taken everything down, and they're I guess they're not coming back. Uh, even though some members have gone and joined other. Uh, clans, uh, the people that ran that particular group are not going to be here unless the public address has been disclosed indicating how much Bitcoin is available. And I think I've spoken about this before in other cryptocurrency puzzle games. That's the first thing that's disclosed is a public address so people can always look and see um, that the funds are valid, that the funds exist, and that they, they give a proof where they're signing with a, a PGB, you know, fashion, or maybe moving a little bit and moving back out to demonstrate that they actually, in fact, 
own that particular address and that it's um, not just any Bitcoin, Bitcoin address that they can just throw up there like Craig Wright or something saying I'm Satoshi. You know, they actually control the private key and when the the game is the jig is up and the game is up and you've you've won you know you're gonna have the bitcoin if you will um <clears throat> so there's been that issue and yes the game makers have stated that they are in fact uh, using the public address as a key if you will a clue to a key or is it the solution if you will and that's fine as far as you know puzzles go figure out the puzzle and you find the public address but as far as trust and verifying it in a community that's very um paranoid if you will and justifiably paranoid i mean if they're coming to get you and it's true then are you really paranoid um type of a deal uh it's, it's a bit of an issue it's a bit of a game mechanic issue if you will of not full disclosure if you will and that you know that's been an issue for and I just want to get it out of the way for a while now but there's these little tiny bit of mistakes if you will that the game makers have been doing particularly with the global key where and the room key I, I think in a sense where there's been an issue about and I talked about this a little bit when I did my uh, text adventure game break down how the influence on this particular game where well, we're guessing the syntax of the game makers and they're not really clear enough in the direction particularly for a global game to where they're communicating enough of a fashion that enough different communities or different global perspectives if you will are capable of understanding the clues for example the room key uh, Many different clans have sent people to obtain the room key, and you have all the way to July 7th for the exhibit to actually close. Uh, but people thought they had to go in the exhibit and, and find a QR code or find a passphrase because such an emphasis on the room, and they were looking at pictures, the walls, going all around, talking to the people within the exhibit who weren't actually even, in fact, part of the, the game, per se. And I'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, actually touching the objects from the exhibit, flipping them around, thinking it might be a QR code or passphrase there, and not really finding anything. And so the, the question has been pointed out, like it's been a kind of couple of weeks until we finally got an answer from the game makers, is, you know, was there sabotage? And it turns out it's not sabotage. It's the fact that the key is actually outside the building. And you have to be... I guess you have to be, and from the picture itself uh, that was disclosed, you you have to kind of be culturally aware of the concept of tagging stickers on objects, which is not something that's culturally uh, permissive throughout the globe. It's still a very Western concept. It's very skater border-ish, if you will. I find it always fascinating certain Western things that do translate through the globe, like rap or uh, metal or email that of that nature, or uh, you know, K-pop is really like a lot of uh, a lot of his influences from early R&B and uh, like '90s early R&B groups and early R&B singers. That type of influence is, is very fascinating. How things disseminate culturally and then is spit out and, and change to fit that culture and then spit out again to change into a, a, something completely different and when it interacts with the world. But putting stickers and tagging things and stuff might not be something that considering that many of the uh, individuals are being asked to go into, you know, so the, I think this is the, the locations in Singapore, um, not Singapore, it's in Hong Kong, if the location is in China. Uh, for having Chinese nationals go go to the location, and there's a communication error. I mean, I think I've seen kind of talking to people in Chinese or having friends going over. They're Chinese nationals. They live in the area. They work together or something of that nature, and it might not click in the inside their heads to think, oh, that's odd that this fire extinguisher and this this um, electrical outlet is all tagged up with all these stickers. Why don't I look at this thing? And there's people that have still gone there and still haven't found this particular section of the building that's like that. And so, 
that's an issue. Two, it's an issue that uh, the game makers kind of glommed on to these different places, and it seems in some cases they actually have direct interaction with a with a person to where they either pay them or something like that to participate in some fashion for the clue drop, like a little internet having in his mp3 file drop this hidden message and then he tweeted out something that he actually deleted for the earth key that he wasn't supposed to delete and it was supposed to be a clue to help people solve the earth key and so it's and then they had the Binance thing and then this um, the, the, the uh, zero knowledge key where they kind of glom onto these other things but they're not completely directly involved per se with uh, the game itself though the Binance thing I think there might be some kind of exchange with the marketing considering that there's been so far um, three kind of keys associated with them you have the philanthropist key which um, you have to give to the, the Binance charity you have the Taipei mini hunt that's supposed to July, start July 1st that coincides with a conference that Binance is having July 2nd. So July 1st is when the Taipei Mini Hunt happens. It's $1,000 and I believe there's a key involved as well. Um, I have a link in the show notes from Jesse Wong about that. And then you have the Binance conference happening July 2nd. So there could be a significant number of hunters in the in the area because this is a cryptocurrency space they might be coming out to Taipei to participate in uh, with Binance which is the big Bitcoin exchange so is either there could be some fellow hunters there or at least if you've been in the space long enough you might know somebody is going to Taipei and be able to say hey can you do this for the end there's like a thousand dollars in Bitcoin up for grabs hey have some fun so there's that um, the other thing is the distance is key, um, the picture that you had to look and zoom in and zoom out and figure things out had a lot of reference to Binance, the company, and Taipei and what was going to happen within that time period. So there's that stuff, but if someone were to email Binance or talk to Binance about Satoshi Treasure Hunter, I bet you they wouldn't know anything about this. And so it's it's... It's like if Coca-Cola were to do a game and they were to, maybe not Coca-Cola because I think, you know, Pepsi. Pepsi and Kentucky Fried Chicken, I think a few others are all owned by the same company. If Pepsi, the Pepsi Challenge, if you will, will or the Pepsi iTunes thing. Remember that back in the, uh, the early aughts when iTunes was launching, you had to get all the different Pepsi um, products and you can get the, under the cap, they had like the little code and you can get some iTunes and download some iTunes songs free or whatever um, I think they even had the girl that was uh, getting sued by the music industry one of their bo- spokespersons and it'd be, it, it'd be like if you were to contact like the Dr. Pepper department or company or um, some company within Pepsi about the iTunes download things and they didn't know anything about it that wouldn't make sense or iTunes about Pepsi they would be like oh no you need to go to this site or contact this number about that particular um, game like if you were to go to the Apple store they'd be like oh yes we are doing that but we don't have that information you have to contact da 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 this information and that will be able to disclose the, disclose the information because we here in the retail section are not directly involved in the game. So if you come in the Apple Store and you're like, oh, my iTunes code is not working, you need to actually go on the website and contact you know, the iTunes people or even Pepsi himself and figure out what's going on because we can't figure that out for you. But we do know what's, what's happening. And that's kind of a, a thing that's going on with some of the aspects of the game where they're going to these spaces, putting up the QR codes or whatever, and the people involved or, or the spaces don't know anything about it. And that's, that's just frustrating because somebody should be able to go to the room, if you will, that location, and it would be like, yes, I know about the Zoshi Treasure Hunt game. Um, 
the the particular thing your object you're looking for is not actually in the exhibit but if you pay attention you might be able to find it they don't have to say exactly where the qr code is but they can tell the hunters it's actually not in our exhibit but it is here it does exist so you have to put your thinking cap on and you have to figure it out and that's the best thing i can do for you i can just tell you it exists there's no sabotage it is here in the vicinity it's just not in the exhibit that would make sense um so something of that nature it's it's a little frustrating if you will <clears throat> so here's a picture of the fire hydrant it's called fire hydrant one you can see some of the lettering is off it's a box fire hydrant it has a blue thing over it uh, it has all these stickers that are on the i guess you can say that the water spout there's a little cat picture that covers the qr code for the actual uh, room key qr code um, there's some chinese lettering here um, i guess indicating the location of where it possibly can be around that building but again i don't think if you were coming to the exhibit you walk by this or you see this as you're coming from the parking lot or anything like that it would cause most people to pause because they think oh that's just graffiti that's just stickers and maybe walk away and don't think that might be some kind of cultural reference or just look at the stickers and examine oh that's a bit of an oddity that's a very western thing in the chinese area uh, maybe that might mean something if you're going to look at everything and obviously the person who found the room key saw that knew what that was culturally speaking and was able to find it and then just, I guess other people, when coming to the exhibit, you're looking around the exhibit, looking around the building and not finding this. Um, there's been chatter about not finding this particular hydrant location in around the building. So which building is it? Is it one building over, two buildings? Is it the same building? It's just, you know, certain clarity, if you will, on the part of the game makers when making this it needs to be a little bit clearer and I'm not sure this is a kind of a syntax or cultural issue or a sense of a game mechanic issue where there is in essence a glitch if you will about communicating about where the potential there could be these QR codes for these uh, geolocations the other thing was the verbiage issue and we're gonna have to talk about that with or the naming of something where there's a miscommunication about culturally speaking about naming an object and that has to do with the global key where you had the different pictures of the different cities and some of the cities that were disclosed weren't exactly named as you would think they would be named even though everyone knows them by this name and then some cities might in fact have been actually completely mislabeled so let's pull up that information so the global key which uh, has a write-up here in the Sochi cipher group has done a write-up about it um, I've seen quite a bit about this in fact um, in the, the official telegram I can't find the link at the moment it doesn't seem to quite be working at the moment to link to the discussion but basically i'm going to read this last bit about their solve and you can always go to the link in the show notes and read for yourself but <clears throat> so no no b is the one who solved it for the Yoshi cipher group so i'll share with you what i did on the global key first i tried to brute force with the google sheet we were building but it didn't work out so i tried to different things using different cities letters I even started using the second letter of the series as nothing work. I continued to use this method with patience and it worked out. To be more specific, we were wrong about 45. It was Normatir, and we were wrong with the Greenland city. It starts with an N. And the Hague was just the Hague. And 43 was Mykonos, which is not really a city. So there's an issue there. And Carl Balso San Lucas was just Lucas. So, I talked about this when I said Las Vegas. Well, some people would still drop the loss and just say Vegas, and you still know what they're talking about. But, Caboso San Lucas, that might not necessarily be 
be the case. Particularly the fact that there's a lot of Lucas's names that could be out there when it comes to cities. Um, I could almost understand San Lucas, but not dropping it to Lucas, and he didn't do that for other cities like Las Vegas. Uh, there's been an issue for some people calling the Hague just a Hague. That might not necessarily be the case. If the city in Nomirta wasn't the actual city from the given picture, it was a completely different city. Um, and the Green Lane City starting with the end. So there's some issues here with people, you know, four long cities out of the necessary amount needed, which was 45. And then you have to, you know, run some kind of calculations. That's still a lot of, even brute force in that four cities, that's still a lot to figure out. Uh, fortunately, we were able to figure it out, but that's, that's a big high error error rate, if you will, for, for a puzzle solve. It really is. I could almost understand one city, like the uh, Cabo San Lucas. I can almost understand that. But to have three more additional ones... It made it extremely frustrating for a lot of uh, hunters when it came to that and there that there wasn't, you know, some kind of check uh, for that case. And again, it comes back to, you know, the clarification and communication and just, and just making sure that things are done correctly, like 100%, that they're... You know, to err is to be human, but again, that's that's four cities out of forty-five. That's a significant number for to have to brute force. And I know that's something that the game makers have stated a few times. Oh, just brute force it, and that's that's starting to kind of get old. Where you, if you're trying to figure out the puzzle and get to the solution, and there's errors on the part of the game makers where you have to brute force everything. That gets tedious and tiresome. It just it just does. I know that doesn't sound like a huge deal, but it it just it just kind of is. It's like these little like I said these these little type of things that make things very frustrating for people about that's that's four cities. It's just it's just just a lot. And some bit of you know positive news. You know um, the Satoshi Treasure official site official Twitter handle has stated that they will be. An upcoming clue that will yield three keys for a small breakthrough in a tricky yet CS problem. That is the um, zero knowledge key. So they do kind of announce these things out to us, much like the Taipei mini hunt on Jesse Wang's uh, Twitter handle. So we kind of do get a heads up about some of these different type of keys. It allows us to prepare for it. Uh, they do say not engineers don't despair. Many other non-technical clues co are coming. And since that's where the dissonance uh, key and the philanthropist key and the uh, freedom key as well as the nirvana key, they were non-technical clues. They were about networking and getting people to geolocations and um, kind of googling and zooming in, zooming out and figuring out and using some internet sleuthing for the dissonance key. To be able to solve that i'll talk about that later on in the week about that type of journey i'm trying to suss all that out because it seems to, to be a very weird journey for people to be able to solve that particular key so i know that it seems like a little nitpicky on my part about the clarification of the rules or hints if you will on the part of the game makers when um putting these clues out, um, verifying their clues, and just running them through enough people to find their errors so that people can, in fact, um, solve these clues. For example, the Earth Key one. Um, this one guy noticed that the little little internet guy had deleted his tweet, and he noticed the tweet, and he just kept the record of it, and he just shared with people saying, hey, this guy deleted something, I asked him about it, and I don't know if it means anything, but I'm sharing it with people, and people were able to, like, oh, that could mean something, and it just caused a whole flurry of activity around the Earth Key, if you will. Um, that kind of thing, where the person that is supposed to participate in a, a small fashion, if you will, deleted some key information. 
um, the room key stuff, a kind of a cultural thing, the air with the global key. Uh, these things kind of matter, and I know it's still fairly early on uh, in the game, but if this is an indicator, it could build up over time if these things are not nipped in the bud on the part of the game makers, particularly glooming on to different areas of the cryptocurrency space in order to attract more 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 hunters to the space I, I i honestly don't know what the game makers had anticipated the level of intrigue i know there was like sixty thousand people that subscribe way off the bat um and then it's kind of dropped significantly a little bit if you will as people have left the game um or not as active as they once were uh, just because of the different types of challenges were not what they were looking for in playing this game maybe it was a mistake I mean it made great marketing sense to do a geolocation right off the bat because that's something that people are used to that's like uh, what's that game show or reality show the one where they travel in pairs uh, I, I forget what it's called I, I I know the survivor it comes after survivor the amazing race <laughs> just had to say a survivor amazing race people are accustomed that to that kind of concept socially and culturally oh it's like amazing race i just go to this location i get the glue i solve the the, the little puzzle thing and there wasn't more like that now there has been more geolocation keys um they've been around the globe if you will i don't think people are playing to you know you know, Rishka and Copenhagen and Singapore for these geolocation keys. And I know the marketing keys seem more like everybody type of a deal type of key where anybody can do that. Um, but for a puzzle game that's heavily emphasis on cartography or at least some computer knowledge or dev knowledge to be able to solve, I, I, that's just already says a small space as it is I don't know what they were expecting as far as the volume of people and the viralness if you will I know Eric Meltzer has stated that he's trying to use this as a means of educating people in the cryptocurrency space and the use of Bitcoin but most of those people technical people are already aware of Bitcoin or at least have some fundamental understanding of Bitcoin even if they don't participate in this community so if you're looking for outside individuals, outside people that are not technical or are not dev centric, if you will, I, you're, and I know the distance is key was more internet sleuthing. I, you kind of need something else, even with the geolocation keys, and that can be like a networking thing. Um, I don't know. You need something else that can kind of grab that more of a mainstream mass audience if that is what they're really looking for I, it just feels very strange they, you're using Bitcoin you're using photography but you want this to be a viral mass thing it's I don't know it just it's a little weird it's a little strange I, I think they kind of have to work with the audience that they have and tailor the game to suit that audience and, and work there I think if the, the, the puzzles are challenging enough, then you're going to have more dev people talking about that. We've already seen, I guess you could say, behind the scenes uh, with the number of the keys that have been solved um, without any public disclosures. That there's private groups out there that are not disclosing that they solve these keys. So they're out there. They're running, running deep, running silent like submarines. Um, and that can way broaden with uh, the, the news articles that, that have come out and increased the number of new hunters that have come to the space and even help solve I, I would imagine it helps solve the bone key and the earth keys are going to soon fall um, <clears throat> and I understand how doing that helps with the game and the marketing and then I'm fine with that I just I, again you're just bringing in people that are already kind of tech savvy dev savvy and already kind of are familiar a little bit about Bitcoin but some of them did come from the space that were not 
familiar with Bitcoin or even about the space, all they heard was a million dollars and oh, Bitcoin, then because it's in the news and run up in price, they're like, oh, maybe I can win this or earn this or how do I play this? <sighs> I don't know, I'm just talking in circles right now. Um, <laughs> I hope things are tightened up. I hope that, um, you know, I'm kind of liking the puzzles. I kind of like in the journey. I'm learning things, figuring things out, going back to keys that I've already been solved and seeing if I can figure them out myself. I am still having a hard time understanding been walking and working through that. But I, I, I guess I have to download some manual or PDF and figure it out myself because none of the how-to videos I've found have been that much helpful, if you will. But, you know, it's a learning experience. It's a learning curve. And I'm enjoying myself so far, um, building the community, watching people getting super excited with the solves or finding something or even getting to dead ends and like, okay, that that's a dead end. That's good to know. Let's move on to the next thing. You know, just seeing how people's minds work and, and how they figure things out. I, I've always found that fascinating. So that's it i have the link, link of the information in the show notes to both the global key and the passphrase so you can um, grab that key yourself as well as uh, the nirvana key and the link to uh, the toshi uh, cipher groups a disclosure of the nirvana key so you can grab that key for yourself uh, i also have a link of all the publicly disclosed keys as well as the keys that are out there and available um, through my Google Dots, if you want to be able to pull those keys, um, go back through and figure things out for yourself. You know when it's been found, not found, what's been publicly disclosed and not publicly disclosed, and things of that nature. Um, my name is Hiroja Shai. Uh, this is Soshi's Treasure Hunters, and this has been your weekly update. Um, and on with the hunt.